welcome to this episode of Cinema Crunch. My name is Rose Donahue, and we are filming at the Quantum Arc Media Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about getting creative content involved with a network by specifically exploring the YouTube show Stargazing released by TLC. I'll be speaking with today's guest, who is an astrologer, writer, and podcaster, Jessica Lignado. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Yay, love it. I, I feel like we've met before. <laughs> I know, so do I. I have that feeling a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> so I am so excited to have you today, um, and especially to talk about stargazing, which just is such a treat to watch. Um, I'd love to ask, how did how did you get involved with the show in the first place? Um, it was actually kind of organic in that I got an email saying, hey, do you want to do this thing? And I was like, I think, yes, I do. And so I hopped on a call with the showrunner, Corey, and um, we talked about ideas. She told me about the direction she was visioning for the show, the other astrologers she was in conversation with. And um, it all sounded really good to me. And um, she had kind of a collaborative approach because she understood what she that she didn't understand astrology as much as the experts, AKA me and the other astrologers um, did. And so it was really wonderful. And I kind of quickly signed on and within a couple weeks, couple few weeks of, um, of her contacting me, I was in New York and we shot it. And, and then within a couple weeks of that, it was up. So it was a very quick turnaround. It was very quick. Wow, that's awesome. And you're Skyping us from Oakland, California. So you went across the country to film. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, it was uh, It was exciting. It was really fun. And it was also really kind of different than anything I'd done before. So uh, it, was, it was a really fantastic experience, which I know not everybody who does like TV-ish. It wasn't TV. It was digital. But um, that kind of stuff feels, but I, I had such a good time of it. That's great. Yeah. I was really happy with and it. And it was with a significant network, TLC, which is both, you know, on yes. broadcast, but obviously has a significant digital footprint as well. Um, did, Absolutely. What, did, what was it like working with people who have done such extensive media content before? Uh, it was fantastic, honestly. It was, uh, everyone that I worked with over at TLC was I mean, really supportive and listened, you know, everyone was collaborative in like I worked, it was a little studio uh, and everybody on set was fantastic. They were just, um, they all knew each other. They liked each other. It seems, I don't know. Um, and everyone got along really well. So I had a really lovely experience. I worked directly with the showrunner primarily and she um she's had a really collaborative way of doing things um and it was every, kind of every step of the way was quite lovely i also was lucky enough to have um access to an agent um who could help me with the difficult parts which for me are the paperwork mm, sure. um so i got i got really lucky that i i had access to an agent through my um book agent because i do have a book forthcoming as as you mentioned so i was very lucky in that regard because i did learn through this process um that there's a lot of contracts to be signed and i am not great at reading a many many page long contract so um getting support with that was really valuable it is good to know your strengths and i don't want to say weaknesses but where you can find guidance from other people absolutely <laughs> and i think in this industry it's like there's so many moving parts it's hard to be good at all the parts. I don't think it's necessary. I think, um, I, I, I definitely was, I just can't express enough how grateful I was to have access to an agent and, and her support, um, of me throughout that process. She just, um, she understood things that I didn't want to have to understand. And I didn't also want to, uh, be irresponsible with the opportunity. So, um, so I was very lucky in that regard too, because I think getting an agent is hard. I don't, I never tried. So, uh, so I was just very lucky, uh, in that regard. Yeah. Uh, well, the fact that you had the book agent certainly helped. So it's kind of, it sounds like one of those things where 
well, you, you're just living your life and things are happening. I mean, intentionally, but things are happening and you don't necessarily know how it will help you later. So it sounds like one of those moments. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I just so happen to have a book agent who's in an agency with, uh, that has like media agents. So I was very, it was very serendipitous and lucky. And I really like both of my agents. So yeah. it's nice. Oh, that's great. There's a lot of talent out there that's like looking for an agent, you know, trying to get representation. So I'll just tell them they should write a book yeah. and they'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> write a book and get an agent who's part of a large agency. That seems to be the move. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, yeah. And, and to be fair, my book, um, I was, I was still writing my book or I just finished writing. I think I was actually still writing my book when the TLC thing came about and it's coming out on New Year's Eve, t- 2019. Very cool. So yeah. So it's all, it's all in this mix of a process. That's amazing. Oh, that's and that's the thing. Life is just a mix of process, and it lands wherever. And the uh, it's astrology for real relationships. Is that the book? Yes, that's the fantastic. That's All the right, so people sweet. can uh, belated Christmas presents option. Yes, <laughs> pre-order it now, and it'll be in your pause for New Year's Eve. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So back to the to stargazing and doing the show. Um, what what were some elements that were a challenge to you entering into this sphere? Uh, probably a lot of them. I'm not an actor. I don't have a desire to be an actor. Um, I'm really good at acting like myself. Um, so for me, I was very nervous that I was going to have to do things that weren't me, uh, like read a script. And there was like a couple of moments where I had to, and those are the moments that I think I look like a wooden puppet version of myself, you know, because I'm just, that's not my skill. Um, so it was hard. Um, I was very nervous about, you know, my career and my work. I am very much in control of my physical environment. That's a huge part of what I do. I consult with clients. I have a podcast, but all of these things, I'm very much in charge of my environment and of my time and even of my own light, you know, like metaphorically and literally. And um, stepping into this was really letting go of control and recognizing that other people were experts and authority and also just in control. And so it was a real practice in um, letting go of that control and trusting um, experts, uh, which, you know, sometimes it, it was a bit intimidating at first. And again, I was very lucky. I'm not trying to say I'm a lucky person across boards necessarily, but I was very lucky in this regard because everyone that I worked with was lovely. And, um, and so once I was there, it was, you know, I had performance anxiety and all that kind of stuff, but it was just a great experience, but it, there was a lot of like, oh, OMGs, what's going to happen <laughs> um, leading up to like the the first day, right? You know, right? And it's tough because you're yeah. you're this expert that they've contacted to be part of this uh, project, um, and you're you're great at talking to people. You're great at meeting your clients. Um, you know, it's very different talking to people one on one or even talking to people in a crowd compared to having it all on camera. So that must have been, yeah. that's definitely yeah. an adjustment. It was an adjustment, you know, having people having, you know, the thing about a set, not to break hearts over here, but like the thing about a set is it's not a real room. It's a set, uh, which I knew that, but I walked in and I was like, oh, this isn't a room, it, but it looked like a room on the screen, uh, you know, and uh, having a bunch of people with lights and being like, wait, 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 wait move your chair three quarters of an inch or whatever, you know, all of that was, it was intimidating. Um, and not, it was, it was like an, an adjustment, but what I really had to do in that experience, which ultimately I have to do, uh, with my practice in general, my work in general, is just work on being really present Mm. and not allowing myself to get distracted by my ego or get distracted by what was happening with other people. It's just really focused on, um, what I was trying to communicate or who I was trying to communicate to, because, you know, when I was doing the readings for people, it was about them. And I just, when I was able to really focus on them instead of, you know, how my hair looked or any stupid thing like that, um, is when we, you know, it's when everything worked out best. It's when I felt best about myself and I felt like I was of service and I probably gave the best performance at those times as well. Absolutely. 
What were some elements of um, structure that you helped to create for the show? Um, well, you know, again, you know, Corey, who created the show, uh, she's amazing. And she really had such a great vision for for what she wanted the show to be, which was really a reflection of her passions and interests. And um, so when I got there, I will say, though, that, that you know, most of the people on set hadn't had a real astrology reading. Um, and I have been full time private practice since 99. I I've given many readings. And so I, um, I was able to, um, give real readings. All of the readings were about 30 minutes. And I think that what was so lovely is that the, that Corey or whoever else was, was involved in making decisions. Um, they liked the readings. They got so much value from the readings, um, personally. And, you know, and they saw the potential for the show that it shifted some of the direction of where the show went. And I think it expanded the role of the one-on-one -on -one readings that I gave, um, because, because they were good not to, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like egotistical or whatever, but, um, but I think the thing that is really relevant about astrology and a lot of other industries is that when we're dealing with, you know, big companies and the opportunities they're willing to give us, you know, to be on TV or whatever, they only know what they know about our industry. And if we ourselves, if I myself am an, uh, an expert in what I understand to be a really um, niche subject, mm -hmm. then it's my job to kind of be like, look at what I can do. Look at what is possible. Right. Look at what else you can have from me. Because they can only ask based on what they understand. And as this was the first astrology show by any kind of major network, they would have no context um, for what was possible. So that was, again, really wonderful because I was able to communicate, this is what's possible. And they listened and, and, and they let me kind of do my thing. And that was, I think, really, I, I, I loved it. That's fantastic. I, I think it was good. Yeah. yeah. You don't know what you don't know, or, or they don't know what they don't know about astrology. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or candle work or crystals mm -hmm. or witchcraft. Like there's so many like niche topics that are kind of becoming more popular now. And, um, people who are in media don't, that's not their expertise per se. And some individuals might be like fans of it, or that might be their personal, uh, life, but it's, it's very niche yeah. and it's also increasingly popular. Yeah. So it's, our, I think my job as a practitioner and in general, the job of, you know, astrologers and witches and all that kind of stuff to not only represent our individual work, but also to represent the, the kind of like knowledge that we are the steward of and to present it in a way that, um, helps people to see what's possible and the most kind of effective way of framing the work itself. So that's kind of what, it, very cool. What I did and, and what I hope to do. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. How, what are some, um, techniques you used to convey these new ideas to your colleagues in this project? Mm -hmm. Um, I used the very subtle technique of saying, let me try this. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's all I, did. I just basically was like, let me, let me approach it this way. And if you don't like it, just tell me. Um, and I was again, very lucky not to overuse the word, but I was lucky that they let me because I understand that not, you know, I could have very easily been in a situation where they didn't allow me to, um, have a big mouth sure. and push my agenda in any way. So I just simply said, like, let me show you what a reading can be. Um, you know, they didn't have the expectation, for instance, that I would talk about medical astrology and for one of the, maybe more than one of the readings, but definitely in one of the readings I did, I talked about health issues and that was the moment that made it to the show because it was one of the most impactful touching moments of that particular reading. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was really, it was really great. And, um, so I would, no big technique, no big technique, just, just go for it. Uh, just asking for it. Yeah. Just asking for what you wanted and, and offering, you know, and offering what you're capable of. And I think people, um, are shy, um, or uncertain about how to frame, like, actually you're asking me, you know, to like tiptoe in the room, but I could dance in the room. Mm. Do you want me to dance in the room? And sometimes they're like, yes, if you know how to dance, let's dance. So I think it's about, you know, just, um, not taking it personally. If the, 
people you're working with are like, no, I don't want you to dance in the room. I said to tiptoe. It's not personal. It's their vision. Mm -hmm. And so I think like essentially not being attached to, um, anything other than doing the best possible job is the best approach for all of these things. It's like showing up to the best of your ability mm -hmm. means not being too can attached to what that looks like, um, is my general MO. And it's certainly how I approached this. Yeah. yeah. I think that's true, especially on sets to do your job the very best that you can, because that affects what everyone else is doing in as subtle a way as, as possible, but also in as big a way as possible. Agree completely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I, it's like, I, I, I don't want to like single out specific people like, but this like sound guy, he was so awesome. And that I worked with on this show and he just, you know, there would be moments where he'd be like, wait, I want to just adjust this thing. He did the, I, I don't know if it's kosher to talk about this sort of thing, but you know, there had to be like a mic. It's like, where do you put the mic? So he got red tape and he taped it to the side of my glasses in this expert way. It was just so detailed and like such a sweet touch, you know, so that there'd be no uh, wires anywhere. And like, I just really appreciated his expertise and his like willingness to nerd out on what he was expert in. And I felt like in this particular experience, everyone kind of, had this opportunity to like show up and do their best and be innovative. And that was, that was so cool. I, you know, having never been in a, in a set situation like that for more than, you know, a couple hours at a time, this was just really fun for me to get to see like all the kind of behind the scenes stuff and to see the different levels of expertise that if you're not in the industry, you're just not going to see. So sure. it was, it was awesome for me. I love I love geeking out on skill. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Were there any other specific elements that really stuck with you as like, wow, that's such a great idea? I mean, I that, that really stuck with me because I'm glasses obsessed. So anyone who's going to work with my glasses is basically my best friend. Um, but I... I really loved everybody that, that was on that set. I really did. They, um, they just, I don't, it, we got along well and everyone, oops, sorry. Uh, we got along well and everybody, um, seemed really lovely. I can't remember anything too specific geek out wise. The glasses one. Other than that. That's, that's gold. It's a good one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's gold. It's gold. Yeah. I, I was just like the level of consideration, um, and like, deep, nerdy attention to detail. I just really appreciated it. Uh, yeah, I really appreciated it, but the, everybody was lovely and they kind of, they let me, you know, when people would come into the room for the readings at first, they would be like, okay, so you walk over here and then you say this, and then we're going to do a countdown to get this, you know, whatever for sound. Um, and after a few times they let me do it. Like I just started doing <laughs> that. Um, and like walking people in because it was a way for me to kind of connect with the people and be like, we're together and they're filming. We're, we're going to ignore them. Um, and it, for me, I was again, lucky that that wasn't offensive to anyone that I was like doing their job. They were like, they thought it was funny that I was doing that. And it was a way for me to kind of be closer to the people that I was doing the one-on-one -on -one reading with and like separate myself from the team, but also separately and maybe paradoxically connect closer to the team mm -hmm. and be a part of the process of like, this is the filming process. So it was a really, I mean, I mean, I, I, I've never heard people talk about these nerdy details before. Maybe it's because I haven't listened to in the right places. So I hope it's kosher that I'm talking about this stuff, but yeah, it was, it was a really, um, it was a great experience to see how many hands go into a project, how many experts, how many, how many um, people with these really kind of highly specified skills come together to make a 10 minute episode of a digital show. It was so cool to me. And, and I love, I love seeing people who are in creative fields, getting to have jobs <laughs> and getting Absolutely. to have work. And that was also really cool. Yeah. So it was just, there was, there were so many really, wonderful and fun things about it. And there was free coffee. <laughs> Let's not underestimate the value of a free love coffee. That. So, I mean, thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I really loved yeah. it too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Gosh. Well, um, so free coffee, great, great ending tip. Uh, unique mic placement. 
love that. And then I, just some of my favorite takeaways from our conversation so far. And then not having to be an expert at everything, just kind of come in, coming to set and doing your thing. Um, I have to say, this is we've actually we're at our twenty minute mark. I can't believe it, but I would. No. I know. <laughs> um, I would love t- for our audience to be able to check you out. Where can they find out more about your podcast and your pre- online presence? All the good stuff. Sure. Um, I am all over the world wide web. Um, and you can find me on my website at lovelaniato.com. And when you're there, you can read weekly horoscopes and monthly horoscopes. You can pre-order my book, which you should totally have. It's Astrology of Relationships. Um, and you can watch lots of video, listen to other podcasts. Uh, I do have a weekly podcast called Ghost of a Podcast, where I give readings to listeners, kind of like I did on the show. And I give a weekly horoscope. Um, and what else? I have an app. You can download a free iOS app called Tiny Spark uh, and follow me on social media at Jessica Lignato. And then finally, uh, I also do an IGTV video horoscope for Girl Boss um, on their social media account. So you can like get more video stuff there and get kind of the 411 on your week ahead. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are a, bunch of, a bunch of places you can find me. Perfect. I, I've checked out a lot of those things already, but I'm excited to continue to do so. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining me today. This was fantastic. That was so fun. Thank you for having My me. My pleasure. And thank you all for tuning into this episode of Cinema Crunch. Again, my name is Rose Donahue, and we are filming at the Quantumark Media Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. Have a happy holidays and a phenomenal new year. We will be taking a little sabbatical. We won't be posting new episodes through January, but you'll catch new ones in February. Thanks again. Catch you next time.